Welcome to the Healthcare Executive Podcast, providing you with insightful commentary and developments in the world of healthcare leadership. To learn more, visit ACHE.org. And without further ado, your host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to ACHE's Healthcare Executive Podcast. This is Eric Sperling filling in for your regular host, Chris Caraggio. Very excited today uh, in honor of International Nurses Day. We are joined by Sally Hurt Deitch. Sally has held executive positions at Tenant Health since 2007. She is currently the CEO of the Mid South Group, Memphis Market, and St. Francis Hospital in Memphis. Prior to this role, she's held executive roles with Tenant Health since 2007. Immediately prior to this, Sally was the chief nursing officer and vice president of patient care services at Tenant. That was based in Dallas, Texas. She's been recognized with many awards, including being named one of healthcare's 10 women leaders to watch by Modern Healthcare, a recipient of the Chorus Boyd Leadership Award by the Federation of American Hospitals, a distinguished alumni by the University of Texas, El Paso, the first recipient of that honor from the College of Nursing, and the Ducey Award by Trinity University Healthcare Administration Department to honor a graduate who has shown outstanding leadership and made significant contributions to the field of healthcare service administration. Sally is also a volunteer leader in the healthcare field. She served as president of the National Association of Latino Healthcare Executives, the chair of the Texas Hospital Association, and as a reason at large for the American College of Healthcare Executives. Sally earned a master's degree in nursing administration from the University of Texas, El Paso, a master's degree in healthcare administration from Trinity University, and a bachelor's degree in nursing from the University of Texas, El Paso. Last but not least, she is also a fellow of ACHE. Welcome into the Healthcare Executive Podcast, Sally Hurt Deist. Thank you, Sally, for being here. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. All right. As we mentioned in the introductions, uh, very exciting because we're publishing this podcast on International Nurses Day, which is May 12th, 2021. So we'll start off with Happy Nurses Day and a huge thank you for the contribution that your team at Tenet and of course, all nurses, leaders have made during this incredible year. Uh, what a year to be in nursing. So just thank you so much. Um, in, in just an incredible year. So we want to express our gratitude for you. Well, I appreciate that, Eric. And, and you know, May 12th is uh, Florence Nightingale's birthday. And so we always finish out our week um, celebrating with Flo. Love that, Sally. Would you start by giving us a little insight into how nursing leadership has contributed to the pandemic response? And maybe you can start like there in Memphis, but as well as the the, the entire tenant system and across the country as a whole. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's a great question, I think. It's been such an interesting, um, and I would call it even an evolution. You know, at the at the beginning of the pandemic, not only have nurses been called upon, you know, in many ways, shape, or forms to step up and step in, but you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, so little was known. Obviously, novel virus, not sure everything at the beginning from transmission to how this actually um, we could we could prevent it, protect each other. Um, you know, a year ago. So if we would have been having this conversation, it would have been probably very different. You know, it was very much at that time about personal protective equipment, um, you know, what and how were things being transmitted, um, all of us kind of waiting for this giant influx of patients, you know, and, and to look at really the leaps and bounds in one year, um, where we're at now is, is very, very different. And it really, you know, I applaud not only all of our, our nursing colleagues, but our medical staff colleagues as well with the way that they have, have taken this on their shoulders and have adjusted every, every way that they have worked um, to, to create you know, safe patient care, appropriate patient care, and doing it in a way that really does reflect the art um, of healthcare and, and the art of nursing and the art of medicine. Yeah, we can't thank you enough and all the nurses on the front line. If you don't mind expanding a little bit, because you just talked about the evolution too. You talked, you know, it was PPE a year ago. Um, so what's what's the focus now? What what are some of those primary things that, that yeah. you're working on? It's, it's, you know, where, where we're at now is really trying to figure out what are the next steps. You know, P, you know, when you think of COVID, COVID will be with us for a long time. And, you know, even though vaccination is in, pro you know, in process and half of the United States has been vaccinated, that is not going to just suddenly make COVID disappear. Right. So the new norm is how do we integrate COVID patients into our normal day-to-day -day routine and, and understanding how do we care for those patients 
um, because it, it will still continue to be a subset of, of the patient population that, that we're taking care of. And so that is really kind of the evolution of where we're at now compared to a year ago. Right. And this transitions nicely into the kind of the heart of our topic today. Um, and that is the importance of triad leadership. And uh, I love even just saying that for the past few years, we've heard about dyad leadership, and that is the relationship between administrative and physician leaders. But the term triad leadership um, brings nursing leaders into the mix. And it's, it's a relatively new term. So can you tell us more about why we're starting to hear this language more frequently in the industry? Yeah, you, you know, I think part of it is just number one, the evolution of the relationships that have developed, you know, and, and when you think of dyad leadership, um, again, if you reflected even 20 years ago, the relationship between administration, you know, not in quotation marks, and uh, the, the physicians and the medical staff, many times tended to be very adversarial. And really the evolution of dyad leadership was intended to create and build those bridges between an administrative team and, and the physician side of the field, where, where nursing has not only come to play or, or being introduced into that triad relationship is really very centric on the delivery of patient care. And when you think of how we deliver care in a hospital, it's, it is, you know, almost 99% done by nurses, you know, and, and at the bedside. And so you can't have this relationship in the discussion without including the nursing partners and how they play a role in overall, you know, in the overall delivery of healthcare. So let's talk about that perspective. You started to touch on that. What is the unique perspective that nurse leaders bring to the C-suite? And so why is it so critical? You kind of touched on it there, but if you don't mind expanding a little more of why it's so important to have that perspective heard. You know, if, if I, if I think back to, you know, I've been a nurse for 31 years and if I think back to my early days, even on, you know, on the units and taking care of patients, the, the relationship between the nurse and the physician is a very unique one and a very unique partnership that is created um, in the care delivery system. And, you know, at the same time, as nurse leaders are developed, it is, it is more than the clinical perspective of how do I deliver care. You start looking at the other aspects of leadership and what does it mean to be a, you know, a nurse leader um, that comes to the table. So bringing in things like financial and the fiscal responsibility that they have, the pieces of developing, you know, nurses and future nurse leaders, how do we look at specific patient populations that develop competencies to care for those patient populations? You know, how do we work with our medical staff leaders when it comes to innovation and new technology that's introduced and how, how are we utilizing that? So it's more than just saying, oh, I need to go clinically deliver care. It is starting to take all of those pieces that really go into nursing management, nursing leadership, that you're really leveraging in a triad. You know, so it's, it's more than, than truly the hands-on care delivery versus what does it take to actually deliver that care? So I love how we've just highlighted how important it is to have that voice heard. And then you just mentioned your career, you know, 30 plus years. So can you walk us through maybe what are some of those common barriers that you, your peers, maybe those you've mentored have faced when moving up those ranks and trying to get that in all-inclusive seat at the table? Oh yeah, um, you know. I mean, to start off, I can tell you from the financial acumen side. Um, Thirty-one years ago, I could barely balance my checkbook. I mean, you know, I, I can remember the first time that I saw, you know, an income statement and and went, like, I have no idea what this even is saying. Let alone trying figuring out where all these numbers were coming from um, to try and then and then try to apply that to anything I was doing and you know, in the unit or in, in my day-to-day -day operating world. So, so first off, I mean, there's no nurse that comes out of a, a nursing school and says, boy, I need, I know how to do staffing and I know how to, you know, balance a budget and I know how to do joint commission regs. I mean, there's, there's no nurse that comes out with the ability to do that. So, you know, initially I think the challenge is even the identification of people that have leadership skills and abilities. And then how do you layer in um, these pieces that are, you know, to our operating colleagues, um, very natural and normal, you know, and 
realizing that that if if you can if you can take a hold of that and actually train it and teach it what an incredible partner you have you know that person that can talk to the doctor and understands the clinical side and can meet with the CFO and explain you know productivity variances and then meet with the operating officer and talk through new equipment and what is it going to take and what is it going to cost I love where this conversation is going because we just focused on identifying leadership and looking at different ways to grow leadership and another important topic that continues to come up on the healthcare executive podcast is identifying burnout. And we know that nurses alongside physicians, some of the most ex- highest rates of burnout among healthcare workers. And we've got data co- coming in, obviously, and predictably, the pandemic has made that trend uh, much worse. So what are some of those ways that hospitals and health systems and maybe tenant in particular um, are working to alleviate burnout and support the physical and emotional needs of nurses? So I know that kind of goes hand in hand with developing leadership. It does. Absolutely. You know, there's, there's also, there's a big realization that is occurring right now, uh, you know, a kind of across the industry. And that is the pull that we had on nurses, especially during COVID, um, not only emphasized the nursing shortage that continues to exist nationally, but, you know, the, be- the belief and thought of what does the future generation of nurses look like? their needs and expectations are very, very different. And and we can fight about it all we want. And we could fight against it all we want and said, we just need to bring more people into, you know, into our, whether it's a hospital or a service or a center or whatever it is, we can do all of these things. And yet we're seeing um, nurses either leaving the field because they're burned out or looking for alternative ways to provide nursing care. For example, um, travel nursing has exploded during the pandemic. And, you know, the, the reason why, I mean, and think about, you know, I think about it from, I guess, the aspect of being a nurse. If I had the ability to go make more money to work a contracted length of time and uh, make more money than I probably have in a year, and I can financially, I'm better off, I can provide more for my family. I can get us out of debt. I can do all of these things. Why wouldn't I look at that? So it really does call into question, you know, what does our future workforce look like? And are they going to become more transient with the ability to take more time off, which then means we're going to need more nurses, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Or it could mean, you know, that that they, they choose to only work certain parts or, you know, points in time. So I think, you know, that to me is the the huge realization that all of us are going through right now um, of how do we supply nursing staff in our facilities. Um, So I think, you know, Tenet has taken the approach and, you know, trying to be, I guess, innovative on our own of of how do we address this and give our nurses options? You know, how do you create um, travel opportunities within a company? How do you how do you leverage the size and, and of our facilities and, you know, the, the geographic span of, of our hospitals or our system to look at other opportunities? And it may not even be hospitals. It may be outpatient care, outpatient surgery centers, um, different options that supply people a way um, to change the, their aspect of daily living. Yeah. And, you know, I guess it's on the more positive side of the response to COVID-19 has been what you were just describing is this, this innovation and this, this progress. Um, So how are you seeing that play out um, maybe at St. Francis, um, you know, in Memphis there? You know, I think it's, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Um, and, And I think we have a, you know, a very large group of nurses who have just really gone through an incredibly difficult year. Um, you know, working incredible amounts of hours and shifts and, you know, putting themselves in many, in many instances in harm's way, you know, and, and becoming ill themselves and watching their colleagues and, um, you know, things that are happening in the community, fear for their family. So all of these things over the last year have really um, impacted our nursing staff. You know, moving forward, what is, what is interesting, and, and again, what we're seeing, at least in our community, is, is think about the message we sent to the public during that time as well. 
don't go to hospitals, stay home unless you're really sick. You know, that's when you, when you go, um, you go to a facility. And so now we're seeing this rebound of patients that weren't seeking care during the pandemic and are coming in with really much later stages of a disease process and are very ill. So it's like the supply and demand, you know, at the time we didn't, whether we had surges, didn't have surges, our nurses were working incredible hours. We had mass migration of nurses moving across the company, the country. And now we've got an influx of patients that weren't seeking care um, that also need care. So it really is a challenge. It's not like all of a sudden it slowed down and we all went, yay, you know, back to normal, um, incredibly busy and trying to care for, for a whole patient population that didn't, didn't receive care in, in, you know, in the, in the recent past. Yeah. And, and we just thought burnout amongst nurses wasn't, it wasn't just something that just happened during COVID. This has always been going on. And so with COVID increasing those efforts, I'm, I'm sure the conversations and you just described some of those scenarios of what it was like, or what it's like seeing colleagues or, or other physicians going through burnout together. Um, and now there's this new phase of patients who have been delaying care that are requiring um, important. I've heard instances of people putting off uh, care and they're having heart attacks, you know, and then the heart disease is, is, is very rampant. So can you talk about where the maybe collective mindset is amongst leaders, uh, nursing leaders to, I, I not to be cliche, say, Hey, we got this, but like <laughs> when, when it's coming to, to where we are now, like, what are those messages like, um, to staff? And again, you can say at St. Francis hospital or what you're seeing across the country. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think the, the messaging is, and I wish I could say we got this, you know, yeah. it, really, it really is though, creating a partnership and understanding trying to take it from the lens of the act, the nurse and saying, what do you need? You know, um, and how do we meet in the middle on some of those requests? And, and it's, and I can tell you, it's not all always all tied to dollars and cents. It is, you know, it is the things that make people feel healthy and feel valued in, in an organization. And how do you focus on at this point, more retention activities, um, I'll give you a, you know, a good example. And, and again, if we think back, and I hate to keep saying think back a year ago, but um, it, it, during you know, the actual outbreak of, of the pandemic, the amount of community support was incredible. And, and it wasn't just in Memphis. I mean, Memphis did it too, but you know, we saw it nationally. It was church groups you know, coming and praying at the hospitals. It was um, restaurants delivering food almost daily, you know, to the hospitals, um, and in, on, on different shifts. I mean, we were, we were getting inundated with food, people making homemade masks. I mean, I mean, you know, any and all outreach was happening from our communities in support of those caregivers. And, you know, I even had some staff, um, a week ago, even say, all that's gone. Mm. Like, like the, you know, what and how they felt from a supported standpoint by the community a year ago is very different now. And so, you know, there's, there's also kind of that community message. Um, and while I think nursing as a, as a profession in many ways has not, and I, I'm not, not that it wasn't elevated before, but I think right. we're thankful for nurses, much like the military, right? You know, thank you for, for what you do and for your service. Um, that message tends to, I think at a certain point kind of go flat because there was a lot more behind it a year ago than it is now. So, you know, I, I think there's also a piece that as hospital leaders, we have in engaging our community and making sure that that information that resonates with people of, it's not just over, you know, this is something that needs to continue and be ongoing. God, I love what you just said. And I love that perspective. I really do. Cause you're spot on. You know, I can absolutely remember, uh, you know, whether it's in my local community or other communities, the, the praise and the support and the appreciation and you're right. It's felt like it has slipped. Um, and Hey, we were okay. Right. Meanwhile, the, the, the pressure is still there. The burnout is still there. And so I think, you know, for everyone listening and especially how timely this is with um, International Nurses Day <laughs> coming up, it's a reminder to say, hey, let's as a community step up and support, right? Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, 
Well, Sally, uh, one last question we have, and we ask this uh, of most of our guests here that come on the Healthcare Executive Podcast, um, who are members or fellows of ACHE, how has your involvement with the organization, including your leadership positions and your FACHE credential, um, really help advance your healthcare leadership career? Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I think I've, I've been a fellow for a long time now and all the recertifications I've gone through, but and I can remember when I sat my exam, um, which we actually did actually go into a pen, pencil and paper test, which you know, <laughs> now has gone way by the wayside and everything's electronic. Scantrons. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> but the scantron. <laughs> but um, it, you know, it has always opened doors. And, and in many ways, it may not be that direct. People say, oh, look, you're a fellow. But the ability to not only create that network and that connection with other people that are fellows is something that is invaluable. And, you know, you're able to not only, um, I think, be reflective of your expertise within the field, but it also really shows the dedication that you have to maintaining status, maintaining that leadership status, and that being a fellow is important. And being up to date, understanding our industry, staying on you know topic and trend um, is very important as we continue to evolve our healthcare systems. Which, you know, in in the matter of triad leadership, is incredibly important because, you know, again, you, you could probably ask Deb Bowen if she went, if she thought back to you know 20, 30 years ago, what did that relationship look like versus now? Yeah. And we see so many of our physician partners, our nursing partners, um, also becoming fellows and recognizing that importance of, of pulling all the leaders together. Well, Sally, uh, thank you so much. I loved our discussion on triad leadership. And I really, really hope the point hits home of recognizing uh, International Nurses Day coming up May 12th, uh, 2021, when we're releasing this. And um, everyone can take that message back to their communities. Um, and so thank you so much for spending the time, I know, with your busy schedule uh, to carve out some time for us today on the Healthcare Executive Podcast. So thank you, Sally. Well, thank you. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate y'all asking and, and happy to do so. And again, happy Nurses Week to all of my colleagues. Um, they truly are the deliverers of, uh, deliverers of one of the finest arts uh, there is known. So we will honor Sally, again, thank you so much. And we want to thank all of you for joining us. And we'll see you next time right here on the Healthcare Executive Podcast. This has been the Healthcare Executive Podcast, brought to you by the American College of Healthcare Executives. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider rating and reviewing on iTunes or your podcasting app of choice. And for more information, find us online at ache.org.